Welcome back everybody to this rather exciting Age of Sigmar painting uh, tutorial today. So I don't often do Age of Sigmar, but I fell in love with the Cities of Sigmar range. Um, so I thought that um, a model that's of a decent size would be a really good example to try and do a quite a complicated model uh, in the shortest amount of time possible, but still look good on the tabletop. And this is what we're gonna aim towards. This is what we're gonna create today. Um, you can't airbrush a lot of the cities of Sigmar range because of how complicated they are. So we're gonna to have to fall back on a lot of brushwork. They're not like Space Marines, you know, they're not like Tau, where we can just airbrush and, and the airbrush does a lot of heavy lifting for us. Um, so hopefully though, this video is gonna show you some shortcuts, so show you some tips and tricks uh, that won't make you go mad while painting your cities of Sigmar uh, models. So we're gonna prime it with white, pure white, not an off-white, a pure white, um, and I did this, uh, I did this with a rattle can, Army Painter's white rattle can. Um, but I am going to use the airbrush just once. Now I'm trying to avoid using too much airbrush work in these videos in order to kind of appeal to everybody. Um, but you don't have to do this step, but I thought this would be a good way to add some contrast in. An alternative would be if you get a dark blue, a purple, a darker color and spray it underneath with a rattle can, this will work as well. But basically, I'm using Tyrian Navy, which is a very, very dark blue, and just hitting it from the underside uh, of the model. And that's the only time that we'll use um, an airbrush, except for once. We're going to use it one more time, a little bit later. Um, but I think that adding this in, this layer, will add some really nice contrast to the overall feel of the model. But it isn't necessary, I think is my most important point. It is not necessary to be able to um, create a good looking model to do the step, but it's a step that will um, enhance some of the contrast. And as I'm told repeatedly, contrast is apparently good on painting uh, painting models. So we just hit it from underneath, um, create some really nice shadows. An alternative would be you start from a dark blue base coat and then just rattle can it white over the top if you've not got an airbrush as well. Uh, so we're gonna use some Grim Black, excellent paint, Satchel Brown, for some leather areas, we're gonna use blood red, which is what we're gonna use for all of the kind of cloth on him. And we're gonna use uh, hardened leather as well. We we'll use a few other paints, but these are really the main paints we're gonna be using. Uh, so on the painted shield, the red shield, we are gonna be using blood red. Now, what I would say, and something I learned from doing this, was that really make sure you try and not get on all um, the other elements that you're gonna to wanna to paint a different color later on. That might seem obvious, but um, I think it's worth just taking your time, particularly with this red paint on the shield, um, to make sure that all the iron work around the edges, you, you try not to get any uh, red on them. That's uh, easier said than done. Um, I would use a slightly smaller brush, I think, than the one I'm using. I think I'm using a number four here, uh, but try and use a, you know, a two or a three, I think. Uh, so we're going to do this um, kind of bird's nest, I guess, in a slightly different colour. We're going to do it in a in a brown, uh, just to distinguish between the different kinds of wood and some are painted in different ways. And that was a mix, a 50-50 mix of blood red and hardened leather, which gives this nice oak colour that's, you know, got some reds in, but it's also distinguishable from the main red we use, the blood red um, painted shield. Uh, so we're going to go for grim black here, and uh, we're going to use grim black in quite a few places. We're gonna start off by using it on some of the iron work um, around the edge of the shield and we'll use it on some other edges a little bit later as well. But we will dry brush this with a little bit of silver later. So I think the important thing is here that we wanna create different kinds of metal. This I'm going for a very dark black iron and then later on we'll go for a more kind of rusted uh, steel on his uh, armor on his shoulders and around his knees and around his ankles as well. So I think that having variations within your metallics is probably a good thing for these models, um, just to mix things up. And also the combination of black against red always looks really, really nice as well. So we're gonna, the top of this bird's nest, we'll do it in this kind of, uh, we'll do this in this black, um, but we, a little bit later we'll create a very kind of uh, uh, darkened uh, iron out of it. And we'll use a little bit of rust effects on it as, as well. 
and then any cloth elements so on his trousers um, and if you can see any on his arms we'll do in this black uh, black color as well and that's the same for the guy perched in the little bird's nest uh, any cloth elements on trousers or arms we'll do with uh, we'll do with black as well it looks like a total mess at the moment but it will all come together i promise you just got to trust in the process that's the most important thing here we won't do much highlighting after this if any uh you know the good thing about this scheme is that we'll use oils to reinforce a lot of those shadows create a buildup of grime and dust so and the speed paint does a lot of the heavy lifting for us here as well so we're going to use satchel brown so we've used hardened leather previously which is a color i really like but on these super dark um leather elements so on the gloves uh some of the leather straps on the boots will go with this very very dark uh very dark leather it's close to black but you can tell the difference and i think again just like with the metallics we want variations within our within our leathers and variations within our cloth as well so using blacks and browns and different browns i think is going to be really important with a model like this i did choose a model like this as well because i think the tendency on youtube is to see you know you might find that someone does a little model a 32 mil based model and go i can do it really quickly well of course you can do it really quickly because it's a yeah it's a tiny little infantry model so i wanted to do something here which is actually quite big and quite complex with lots of elements to it and see if we can still do it quickly but still look good so that was the challenge i kind of set myself with this uh with this video so you can see the leather elements i've picked out on both uh, both sets of models here and I would advise you do them all at the same time just for just for the sake of speed I wouldn't do the all the the ogre in one go and then go to the to the dude standing at the top and do it all at the same time so we're going to move to blood red again and actually you could have done all the blood elements in one go and we're going to do um, kind of his main robes his leather jerkin I think you maybe describe it as um, and we're going to do this with red and again we won't highlight this any further we'll just use this color the flow is really nice on speed paints you've heard me say that before if you've ever watched any of my videos so it's unnecessary for you to kind of further layer this uh, but if you want to you certainly can but speed is the name of the game with this uh, with these particular videos If you've not used oils and you've watched the start of this video and you've got this far as well and you're thinking oh no he's going to use oils i've never used them before they are so simple to use and we're going to make them basically idiot proof uh so anybody can use them and anybody can you can feel like they've got the confidence to, to use them as well so what you can see me doing here is basically correcting all the mistakes that i made so i was like oh i'll just be really slapdash with this and then realizing being slapdash wasn't that useful so on some elements where I've just gone over um, places that I need to use some speed paint again with a lighter color, I'm just picking these bits out in white. Um, and then we can just go over them uh, with speed paint. So you could either be careful on the first pass round or you can do what I'm doing, which is just fixing the mistakes you make um, as you go. And there was a couple of other elements, a couple of other mistakes I made on the model and just corrected it with this, with this white paint. And some on the some at the front as well um, and then there are some other elements dotted around some other leather elements as well so we're going to use a pallid bone really good uh, this color for um, for parchment papers and things like that but we're going to use this on the kind of like the the central element of this of the shield I guess maybe you know you could describe it as like a a sculpted ivory or something maybe just to add a bit of contrast between the darker red and the um, and the pallid bone and then all these elements of uh, cloth can just be painted with that pallid bone as well i didn't even bother doing any script work on um on them because the oils kind of made it so kind of dirty and gritty uh, that i didn't feel the need to but you could um add some kind of script work onto onto these parchment papers 
and then I just uh, the leather element at the top so I didn't want to dominate with that satchel brown so I just kind of uh, decided to go for kind of a pallid uh, bone on the elements around um, uh, his shoulders so we're going to start the flesh elements here we're going to use peachy flesh uh, we're going to use two layers of this, but we'll wait for each layer to dry before applying another layer. And I use exactly the same colour on the Warhulk as I do for the guy here. We don't need to absolutely drench his face or either character's faces um, uh, with that colour. So just be a bit circumspect with it. Right, we're going to use Broadsword Silver. If you're finding that it hasn't got too much of a bite, it is, of course, a speed paint this. So it kind of shows up all the edges, which is what we want. But if it's if you're finding that it's not got a, a little bit of a bite to it, then you can always add um, just the tiniest amount of um, silver, one of the wall paint silvers or air paint silvers uh, into it. And you might find it's just got a little bit more bite. But this is just broadsword silver going over those silver elements. Uh, and it's really nice, kind of like neutral middle of the road silver that you can wash down or highlight um, further and then what we'll do a little bit later is we'll add some rust effects um, to uh, to the silver just to give it a little bit of character make it grim dark I hear people in uh, Warhammer like grim dark things and then we're gonna go with hop light uh, hop light gold or oh, sorry golden armor this one um, and it's a speed paint and this is just going to go over the silvers so um this is really nice because it flows into all the gra gaps because it's a speed paint and uh, naturally has highlighted uh, edges um, picked out which is really really nice so adding it adds a easy little bit of definition without us kind of like further uh, kind of highlighting it uh, from there but you can really start to see now that all the jigsaw puzzle pieces are starting to come into place it's starting to get get there so we're just going to add a transfer here. So I've gloss varnished both models. Now you can get rattle can gloss varnishes. Uh, they're easy to find online. You can do it through the airbrush if you want to. This was a rattle can gloss varnish that I use here. This is actually a car lacquer gloss varnish I use uh, use here. But as I say, um, I've used Army Painters gloss varnish through the airbrush loads before. Um, so it is uh, completely up to you whether you have an airbrush or or not. But um, for the next steps, it's going to be important that we gloss varnish the whole model and you'll see why in a bit. Uh, so the transfer goes down. I've chosen uh, one of these brown transfers. I, th I think that's the kind of like the matching scheme that GW um, uh, has done, but I thought it was it kind of fitted perfectly and contrasted nicely with that padded bone color. And you can see me just making tiny adjustments uh, with a scalpel. We use micro set first, lay that down, tiny adjustments with the scalpel just to get everything centered and lined up. And then we leave it to dry and then we can go over it again with the micro sole. And if you're not sure which one to use, uh, micro set has the number one on it and micro sole has number two on it. And then once the micro sole's done its work, it's you know, give it 10, 15 minutes to, to do its thing. The transfer will lay nice and flat after that. Um, I'd really recommend doing it this way with a gloss varnish so the transfer just can sit really smoothly um, uh, over that area. And then here comes the fun part. So we're going to use cadmium red hue and we're going to use burnt umber. Now I use the cadmium red because the model was red. So I kind of wanted to have a theme around the model. It's got, you know, reds within. But actually, in reality, I didn't use that much cadmium because looking at the burnt umber, you can see it's got quite a lot of reds in it already. Um, so where I was going in being like, oh, I'll just use 50-50 of this. Actually, I, I used kind of 90% burnt umber with a touch 10% of cadmium, uh, cadmium red. And we just slap it all over. I don't paint like this very often. This is not something that I necessarily do very often kind of in my own day-to-day -day painting. But it's a great way to get effective contrast, grime, dirt built up on a model very quickly without too much skill this is just procedural there's not a lot of skill involved in this process i just take a big brush and slap the oils all over um, and then that's going to go into all the nooks and crannies it's basically like using non oil over it or using agrax earth shade all over it but what's good about this is that we can clean it up and that's going to be the next step 
and you know as much as agrax earthshade slapped over or you know washes slapped over a model might look good the problem you have is that sometimes it dries in unusual ways you might get disgusting looking kind of like tire marks or coffee stains on your model that you didn't intend to because you haven't been able to you've you've missed a spot where you were intending to pick it up the great thing about oils here is that we can just slap it all over and then clean it up in a bit and we've got quite a long workable time you know i would say around 12 hours before we you know that it really starts to dry and taint the color underneath it as well now in reality i put these down hair dried it maybe for on a on a coolish setting for you know five minutes or so and then it was dry it was fine it was good to go um so completely up to you how long you leave it for but the longer you leave it the more it will stain the color underneath is what i would say i left it probably for about 10 minutes so it's not going to stain the color too much but will add nice contrast and definition into all those nooks and crannies and what you can see me doing here is taking a cotton wool bud or a q-tip um, you can do this with a small makeup sponge as well um, which probably you know not sure if it would be more or less environmentally friendly, but whatever you want to use, you can use. Um, and I'm taking clean white spirit here. Um, and then just picking up uh, kind of the excess oil. So leaving it in all the gaps that the, the Q-tip, the cotton wool bud can't get into. And then just taking off the, the excess. Now the oils... Uh, were mixed with white spirit as well. White spirit is dirt cheap, probably costs about three pound a bottle, but I go for odorless white spirit, um, uh, which is slightly nicer to work with than uh, than not. You could use sansador. I just find sansador takes ages to dry. Like basically, you'll leave it for a day and it would dry. It would still be drying, which isn't very useful either when making videos or doing commission painting. And then I've given it a matte varnish. Now, uh, Army Painter does uh, an anti-shine matte varnish through the rattle can. Uh, but you can also use their uh, airbrush uh, matte varnish as well, which is really, really nice. And you've seen me use lots before in previous videos. But because we've used a matte varnish, everything is obviously matted down. So all the luster of the, the silvers that we've just had and put on our model has been completely matted down. You might like that. That might be the effect that you like. But I want to bring, bring a little bit of shine and gleam back to some of these metallics. So you can see here we talked about the iron. And we're just giving it a, a dry brush of that plate metal silver color. And it just makes it look like a, a kind of, you know, a very, very dark iron colour. And then the silver elements here, we're doing exactly the same. We'll just uh, brighten it up, maybe with a slightly heavier coat of uh, of our silver. And I'm using a, a flat makeup brush here to dry brush these things on. And I just find that the flatness of the brush just allows it to make it be more accurate because we don't want to get it on places like the cloth and on the wooden shield. So just something to uh, consider and something to bear in mind. So just be, that's a, you know, here is a perfect example where it's right against the wood and we've got to be careful with our dry brush so we don't get it onto any areas that are non-metallic. But it's really nice to have that difference, that black metal, black iron, and then I suppose the steel of his, uh, steel of his armor, having variations within your leathers, your woodwork, uh, and your metallics as well, I think just adds real interest to this model, which is actually quite a complex model. You know, there's lots going on with it. It's not a standard Mark VI Space Marine, which are fairly simple. Greedy Gold. And then I'm just giving this a bit of a dry brush uh, with Greedy Gold. Um, and obviously there's still silver on my brush from before, so it, it looks perhaps lighter than just Greedy Gold, but I guess it's Greedy Gold mixed with a little bit of silver. And we're just picking out the... Um, the edges on this just to bring it bring a little bit of luster back to uh to the metallics that we completely killed uh, when we matte varnished our model so up next we're going to create some really easy uh rust effects here so we've got molten orange which is a um, airbrush wall paint i'm going to mix it with a little bit of airbrush thinner you can mix it with some water yeah, similar kind of thing going on, you know, similar effect. And it's very, very thin. And what I'm doing it is I'm just washing it over particular areas where I think that there would be a buildup of rust. Now, you do not have to do this. I suppose what I'm trying to simulate is an environment that he's been fighting in for a very long time. He's been out for a very long time. The shield has got wet. So that's encouraged rust to kind of build up on our uh, on our model and to oxidize. Uh, but if you want a non-rusting um, 
elements of the armor. Just don't do this. You know, I suppose I'm also trying to create like a grim dark uh, model here, showing you guys different effects. And grim dark, you know, one of the things about it is that the environment affects the model. You want a, the two linked together. So having kind of rust effects to simulate oxidation with the environment he's fighting in is something that you would typically find in grimdark painting. Um, not often, you know, I suppose that I use techniques that are shared with grimdark, but I wouldn't ever describe my painting as grimdark. But as far as grimdark goes for Age of Sigma, this I guess would be it. Um, Hydra turquoise. Exactly the same process, and I'm just going to use it on the gold elements here. You don't have to do this, and you might be like, oh, well, gold doesn't oxidise in this way. You know what? No, it doesn't, but it adds a little bit of uh, interest to the overall armour and just shows you another technique that you could potentially use on your model if you wanted to. Not that you have to, but just a model, that it, another technique if you wanted to. But this is mixed with airbrush thinner, and I find mixing it with airbrush thinner uh, and the armour painter one has a bit of flow improver in, helps it to flow. So onto the flesh. So we've got barbarian flesh here. We have also got peachy flesh, I think it's called. Oh, elven flesh. I used peachy flesh before then. So elven flesh. And we've got a bit of white and we've also got a bit of black on there as well. So this is uh, what you can see now in the hand is just our peachy flesh speed paint that we used previously. And then that has obviously had oils on it from the burnt umber. And then it's been matted down. Now you could, if you wanted to, just leave it like that. But I want to define some of the, um, you know, the nose, the cheek, the bottom of the chin, the lip, those kinds of places. Just with a mixture of these colours. And you could see me there on the wet palette just trying to get a natural highlight between those two flesh colours. That would be a natural step up from what is on there and that takes experience it takes um you know an eye to be able to kind of work out what colors i need to put together in order to get a natural highlight and it took a little bit of experimentation to do that but here i'm just very roughly highlighting uh the flesh areas on the model and looking and kind of going right where where can where's an appropriate place to um Add definition to the to the skin I didn't paint the eyes on this model because they were hidden away by the helmet didn't think it was necessary but I do go and um, paint the teeth with a little bit of white mixed with a flesh color just to kind of have a yellowy uh, yellowy color as well so the base uh, oak brown on the base some thinned oak brown and then I've just painted the um, stones a grey colour. I actually mixed white with black I didn't use a grey color because I just had it on my palette and then I've used some greens um, to kind of simulate some rust effect, just some watered down greens, uh, sorry, rust effect, I didn't mean rust effect, we might create a moss effect on our model and on those stones, just to add, again, a little bit of interest to our, our model. To be honest, um, I don't think you need to add additional stones to it because of what we're going to do in a little bit, um, but just some watered down greens on top of the uh, top of the rocks just creates quite a cool moss effect. And then we're going to use here, um, some weathering powders, some fairly neutral brown colours, and then I mix it with kind of like a lighter dust colour as well along the bottom. And you can see me here just adding it along the shield where it would pick up dust over time along the boots, and that just picks out some edges really nicely. So again, linking it to its environment. And then finally, we're going to use lowland shrubs, and we're using them mainly because they're quite a bright green. And that's going to contrast really nicely with the reds that we've used within our model. So that's going to help our model to pop off of the base because we're using colour theory to help with contrast and constantly told that contrast is good in models. So let's make sure we uh, we use that. And you can see here a little bit of super glue on the palette that I've been using on and off for the entire session. So a little bit of super glue <clears throat> just to make sure that it sticks and stays, although they have got sticky sticky bottoms. Um, but I was just worried that with the, the actual weathering powders themselves that perhaps it wouldn't stick. So a little bit of super glue will just ensure that it sticks. And I filled this base up with uh, with that shrubbery. Uh, but you don't have to use as many as as I do, but I just wanted a pretty jam-packed uh, jam base. 
Try to find smaller ones to fit in the nooks and crannies. And then of course we need to paint the rim black or brown, whatever your preference is. And then finally we have our War Hulk here. And this is it. This is the model, the, the completed model. Uh, something which is uh, fairly quick to paint, fairly procedural, not a lot of skill really involved in what I did today, apart from just being accurate with a brush. And even then I wasn't too accurate, you know, I had to go back and correct some of the mistakes that I made as well. But I hope that's been useful for you. And if you're looking at starting a Cities of Sigmar um, army, then hopefully this is a quick way to go about doing it. If you like the video, let me know by leaving a comment below. It would be amazing if you could click the share button. Uh, that really helps me out and helps the algorithm and spread the word. Um, and don't forget to subscribe as well. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.